Hello. Welcome to POV You're My Therapist, the podcast where I vent you listen and you don't get paid, babe. Um, we're in, we're back. Mm-hmm. We're back in the uh, the old room um, because I truly thought that I would have been moved by now, you know, that I'd be in my new digs, I'd be setting up, probably be taking a break from the podcast for a little while just to, you know, get myself together, just to, you know, like, you know, get a nice breather and whatnot. Um, clearly that's not what's happened. So, um, I was like, you know what? It's, I'm moving back upstairs. I'm moving back upstairs. Um, and now honestly, what I really thought about is ordering a second microphone to have in my bedroom so I can just kind of like record whenever I feel like it. And then, you know, moving back upstairs or whatever. So anyways, I really kind of wanted the vibe for today. I should have lit candles and stuff, but I really wanted the vibe for today to be like really cozy, to be really intimate because I want to talk to you today about loneliness. I really, really do. Um, but I have my silk jammies on. Shout out Savage X Fenty. Um, I picked not non spons okay? But I picked this up um, at their opening. They had a little opening uh, for the gurus in Atlanta. So I went and I picked this up. And, and oh my God, it's so nice. It's so, ooh, I feel rich. I feel luxurious. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really feel like sexy. But also, I feel I feel soft. I feel vulnerable. And, um, and I don't know if you ever have those moments where you're kind of going through life and it's not deja vu, but you have a moment that kind of feels like I've had this feeling before. It's like the very first day that you feel that spring is coming, or it's like one of those random days towards the end of the end of winter where the sun just kind of hits you just right And you smell all of these smells and something in particular just takes you back to a time and a place and you really like it's it's a really nice feeling and I I felt that feeling today and um and what that feeling reminded me of was the the times when I was younger when I was so hopeful about the next step of my life and And I was just thinking about that and it reminded me of like an ocean breeze and I remember at that time I really wanted to move out to California and and it just took me right back to it. So obviously I did what you all what I was doing at that time, which was I would like go on Zillow and start looking up apartments and stuff. I started looking up apartments, uh huh. Um, all of that. But I don't know. Recently I've been thinking about loneliness a lot because I think for me Loneliness is something that I'm I might end up having to experience for a long time. Um feeling lonely I think is very different than feeling alone and it's very different. You can f- I feel like you can feel content and lonely cuz right now I'm really feeling content like I'm really happy with where I am in my life. Um and it's funny because like I wish I had one of my friends here to talk to you about this as well because you know a lot of times like I complain about stuff and then people give me like the most girl I know y'all can hear that too that's the worst part about it anyways so you know sometimes like you complain about how you feel to people and they they kind of want to just pacify you But I had a friend the other day who she really put what I was feeling right into words. And I was just like, damn, like, thank you for saying that. And a part of me wanted to go deeper in that conversation with her. But another part of me just wasn't ready to be vulnerable. (laughs) I just wasn't ready to just like open up my heart. Like I wanted to stay being angry for a little longer I wanted to stay like in the woe is me moment for a little bit longer and now I you know I had therapy this week really nice had a lot of good things happen this week super thankful feeling super blessed and now I think like I'm ready to like talk about it from 
the, you know, the, my higher self, my, you know, my high vibrational self. Um, except honestly, I'm really not in my high vibrational era right now. I'm gonna let you know that right the fuck now. I'm in my villain era. I'm doing a good job at not acting upon my villainous tendencies, but you better believe I'm in my villain era. I really am. I am, girl. I am in my shut the fuck up. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. You're blocked. Um, era. Okay. Um, and it's funny, I didn't realize that until the other day, my friend, she was like, she was like comparing me to her boyfriend and she was like, you know what I love about you too? She was like, when you've been wronged, you want the world to burn. You absolutely want the world to burn. Because I was telling her, like, I've been working on this project and I feel so taken advantage of that I'm like, I'm going to block everybody on this project the day everything is falling apart. Because I know it's coming. I know that day is coming. And I've felt so wrong that I'm not going to help nobody see it through. Okay? Um, I'm burning it to the ground by not being available. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, she was telling me that, and I was like, damn, maybe I am in my villain era just a little bit. But, um, not in my villain era, just kind of just willing to talk about this specific thing right now. We can all admit that, you know, Divine has her share of, she's a lonely girl. I don't know why. Like, I just am. Um... I have a lot of need for love. Validation has been something we've talked about. You know, we want to feel like we are somebody's other. And that is a feeling that I have never felt, that I am someone's other. And I was, I went to dinner, and this is really why I'm talking about this, is I went to dinner and I had this, this conversation with somebody. They... I felt so seen because I didn't know how to, because this is the thing, right? My friends, I'm the only single one, only single friend. I am the only single friend, okay? They have roommates. They have friends um, that they are closer to than me. They have kids. They have priorities. And the shitty thing is you get to a certain age where you have to swallow and just smile and just get the fuck over it and it sucks it really sucks because I don't think people who are in those relationships or people who are in those friendships I don't know what I can say to make them realize or make them understand that there is probably somebody around you who feels so far away from you and feels so lonely from you, who they would drop everything they are doing to help you. And that does not cross your mind to do the same for them. There is somebody in your presence that you are making feel that way. And it's, you know, like, just think of your single friends. Like, it's, I feel like it's not a lot to, like, invite your single friend out somewhere. Or, you know, like, the friend who doesn't have a group of friends. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know who that person is. I don't have to explain this to you. You know who that person is. And it's a choice to make to constantly forget about them. Because you are not a pair. You know? I hope that makes sense, but it's easy to forget about them because they're not a part of that pair. They're not a part of that unit. Um, And it's very lonely for the person who's not a part of that pair or unit. And like recently, like I've really been feeling the weight of this. And I went out to dinner with one of my friends and, and we talked about this and she knew exactly how I felt. And like, And I started to cry because, you know, I'm a little emotional, but that's okay. I started to cry because, you know... Earlier this year, like, I definitely thought that I found somebody who, without a doubt, I knew that when they wanted to do something, I was the first person who came to mind. And they were my person also. Like, the minute, you know, something was going on, I was like, oh, let me call this person. Let me call them. Yeah, I'm inviting them. That's my plus one, you know? I thought I found that person, and I didn't. And that hurt so bad. That hurt so bad. Because it is so nice to feel chosen. 
to already know that you're chosen, to not have to do the sidestep of, um, I'm inviting you, but you don't have to come. Um, and yeah, you can bring someone else. That's fine. You already know, like it's me and it's you and it's us too. And we're, we out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I thought I found that and I didn't, and it really fucking hurt. And I was, I don't know, I don't know how they feel, um, but I know that from my perspective, I've been replaced and that is okay. Okay. So I've gone through my whole life kind of feeling this way and my friend expressed the same thing to me too. She was like, I'm never anybody's like best friend. Like I'm never... Uh, People are always my best friend, but I'm never anybody's best friend. And, like, I think you remember me telling you that story where I said to that girl, yeah, this is my best friend. And she looked at the group and she said, you're not my best friend. You may think you're my best friend, but I'm not your best friend, you know? So, after such a long time of being your biggest advocate, of being your best friend, of honestly mentally like duplicating myself and like it's like I'm I'm constantly talking to myself. Maybe I'm crazy, but I'm constantly talking to myself like I'm my friend because I don't really feel that there's a lot of people that I can count on in that way. And I don't blame them because they have their fucking lives. They have things that they're doing and it sucks. But it's just like how do I appease this? Like, how do I deal with this? It's like, I saw a tweet the other day and there was like a big ass debate about it. But this girl was saying how, um, how much money single people spend on their friends who, okay, so people who are, uh, one income households, um, no kids, uh, single, I already said that, how much they spend on their friends, how you as a one person with one job paying all of your bills by yourself you are buying engagement gifts you are buying um wedding gifts you are buying housewarming gifts you are buying um uh baby shower gifts you're doing all of that you celebrate all of these moments in people's lives and Until you meet that standard of the same thing, you're not celebrated at all. And it's like, you don't, you know, you don't really get celebrated for your promotions or whatever. You have, you get a promotion at a job and you're really like a bad bitch. You're giving Samantha. I promise you, one of your friends is going to be like, when are you going to settle down? You're doing so much. And it's like, what about the people who maybe their life um, path does not include getting married or having kids. Like, what does their life look like? To me, I think one of the most unrealistic things about Sex in the City is the ability of these four women to spend that much time with each other and not just let the friendship fall to the wayside. That is some soulmate shit, okay? Because in real life, the minute Charlotte had a baby, she's, you're not seeing her, okay? She doesn't care what's happening in your life. She's got to deal with her own shit. And you can't be mad about it. You, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'd be mad about it. And I'm getting to an age, getting to an age where, you know, I don't have kids for a good reason. And I don't have a mate. I don't, I'm not, I'm currently not dating. I'm not dating. Um, and I don't want to date actually. So I'm, I'm in this place where I'm like looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you are going to have this, to walk this road alone. You are, you are. It is hard and it makes me sad, but at the end of the, why am I getting emotional? Shut up. (laughs) But at the end of the day, I know that there's nothing wrong with me, that these are just circumstances, and my future is bigger than the moments where I feel left behind. 
No child left behind. Y'all left my ass behind. Okay. It is a awful feeling to constantly feel forgotten and overlooked and not chosen in every aspect of your life. But I know that with this podcast especially, I know that I'm definitely walking in the path that I'm supposed to be walking because every Monday and every Friday, thousands of you choose me. I'm about to start bawling. (laughs) Oh, fuck. No. (laughs) Girl. I don't know why this is like the energy we're coming out with today. But apparently this is the energy. (laughs) This is, you know how long I spent on my motherfucking makeup? A long time. And now these little tears is coming out. They trying to do some bullshit, girl. You better stay where you are. Absolutely. This is a conversation that I'm consistently having to have with myself, but now I want to have with you because a lot of us feel the same way. To get to where you're going, you're going to be lonely, but you just have to keep your eye on the motherfucking prize. Okay, bitch? There are going to be so many emotions that come on the fucking daily, and yes, it is exhausting. Yes, it is trifling and annoying and terrible to have to constantly be your own support system, but... You are choosing a path that not everybody is built for. Not everybody is going to be able to do. You are choosing your own fucking path. And that's just how the cookie fucking crumbles. You're going to feel lonely when you have to do the thing that is not the ordinary. We did not do STEM, girl. We were not trying to do math. We're not trying to do any of those things. Where I'm over here trying to do a fucking podcast, bitch trying to build a podcast what is this like a radio signal empire I don't know but I'm doing it alone and I know nothing about it and I'm doing my best and every day I'm learning and there's nobody I can learn from there's no book I can read to just give me all of the answers there's nothing that can make this easy it's not like when you're in med school and you're surrounded there is a camaraderie between the suffering med students you don't have that like once you're out of college and that's when you decide to try to figure out your path it's hard it's just fucking hard and you have to constantly gentle parent yourself to remind yourself that no you're not a loser and that you are trying hard and that you are just one person and you're doing a lot for one person and you're gonna be fucking fine okay and I've made it a point like literally recently like because I'm like okay we you know we got we got the apple cosign baby (laughs) <laughs> we got the apple cosine we we're getting the numbers we're getting what we gotta do you know what we're saying like slowly but surely the the pieces are coming together slowly but surely we're doing what we gotta do and i'm thinking what's my next step what what after i've i've, I've accomplished this tiny thing right here but i need to capitalize off of this what's my next step what do i do now where do i go now I don't have anybody to like sit there and throw ideas out to. You know what I'm saying? So I constantly find myself going around in circles, reverting back to people that I had reached out to before who did not see the vision. So they tossed me to the wayside. And I find myself wanting to go back and being like, hey, so this is what I've accomplished since we've left off. Will you help me now? There's a part of me that wants to do that. But like I said, I'm petty. The petty bitch in me is like, you didn't see it then. Why? Why do I want to go and ask you for help now? And you're probably going to help me. You're probably going to give me a little bit of attention and a little bit of aid Because now you see, oh, oh, she's proven herself to me. I don't want to do that. Because I got so far on my own. I know this mentality is going to have to change at some point. But I got so far on my own. I'm a little jaded. I'm a little jaded. I don't 
want to circle back and allow people that didn't see the fucking vision the first time, I don't want them to get the opportunity to benefit off of what I'm going to be. I really don't. I don't. And the crazy thing is, there are moments where, you know, I I was so in a mindset of I'm I'm being ignored by the people I want to help me because I haven't proven myself enough. I was in that mindset. And then I had one meeting where um, it got to the point where the person I was having the meeting with, they said to me, they said, uh, why didn't you reach out to us before? And I said, well, you know, I was kind of waiting for this milestone, which was me hitting 125,000 followers. So I was like, I was kind of waiting to hit 125,000 followers and then I'd reach out because I felt like it gave me more, I don't know, like it gave me more oomph that like, yeah, you know, she's, she's developing, developed, you know? So I said, I said that and she said to me, um, she said, honestly, you could have reached out at 60,000, at 25,000, at zero, I would have had the same reaction and I would have still wanted to work with you in the capacity that I'm working with you now. And I'm like, after that meeting, I really sat there like, I really was like, I let you niggas play my face for real. Like, I saw the vision and you didn't. And because of that, it made me question myself. And I felt like I had something to prove. When... At the end of the day, people who see you are going to see you. People who get you are going to get you. You're not going to have to hit a certain number to get their attention. You're not going to have to have, if you're a musician, 10 million streams. You could have two. If they see it, they see it. You're not going to have to be 135 pounds for him to finally notice you. If that's your person, that's your person. And while the loneliness of the moments of why does no one get me in my SZA era? Why does nobody see me? Why does... I feel so lonely. I I have to constantly tell myself, this is temporary. This is temporary. One day, I'm going to have a partner who gets me. Who I don't have to explain small emotional things to. They're, although I'm going to have to work on it. But they're going to be, they're going to be understanding as to why I've been angry. Like why I'm angry. Like for so, like why I'm angry. Because I felt alone for such a long time. They're going to get that. I'm not going to have to necessarily like explain that. They're going to be empathetic to that at the least, you know? So I've been thinking about that a lot. And like, I constantly have like all these thoughts like running through my head all the fucking time. I think about like Voldemort and how like Voldemort never fucking saw me. And I wish like... To like it, and I hate it because it does affect me still. Because there's a part of my me in my mind where I'm like, when I'm looking through who's watching my stories, like when I really post like a flex, bitch, I'm like, I hope he saw that. I hope he saw that, and he's like, oh, she's shitting on me. I'm like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm petty, but I hope all my enemies, all the people who wish me bad, all the people who don't see me, who don't get me, who talk bad about me, who look down upon me, who think that they're better than me, who I've never judged a day in my fucking life, but they take it upon themselves to judge me all the time. I hope you see how well I'm fucking doing, bitch. Like I do. I'm not meaning to sound like a rapper right now. Or, like, you know, on my, like, talk big shit. But, like, that's just how I feel. And, like, glory be to God. Thank you, God. I'm very blessed. I feel very lucky. I feel happy that, like, my my hard work is being recognized. But, child, 
there is not enough holy water on this earth to make me not want to shit on bitches consistently. You know what I'm saying? Like, I put in a lot of work and I think sometimes you can let your ego run a little rampant. This is my 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 era for that moment. Um, but still, in the midst of it, there is a lot of loneliness. I'm not even going to lie. So, all of that is to say, if you have an idea that you want to do and like, Every time you talk about it to somebody, they don't get it. They don't believe in you. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Because um, one day your moment in the sun is going to come and all of a sudden everybody is going to want to help you. Everybody is suddenly going to become your biggest fan. Everybody is going to be is suddenly going to be telling you how sorry they are that they never saw you before. But now they see you. Now they get you. And you're going to have the innate pleasure of being to being able to ignore them all because you always believed in you. You always saw you. You always knew what your potential was. No matter how many fuck ups you've had, no matter ba- how many bags you fumbled, you knew that one day you'd make the right decision and you did. You did. Trying our best. Um, it was Valentine's Day two days ago and I want to just applaud all of the people who um did not stay in a shitty relationship just so they could say they had a valentine um i absolutely blocked it from my mind i also think that's another reason like why i've been feeling a little bit of a ways because i did block it out of my mind but i you know you're not able to really block that much out of your mind and it was not lost upon me That this is, yes, my 27th year with no Valentine. Um, I thought about that. I did. And I was like, you know, we're not going to think about that. Because that leads to depression. And I'm not in the mood to feel depressed. Um, I'm not in the mood to think about how not having a relationship has absolutely traumatized me in a molecular way. Um, I'm just not ready to think about that. And I'm not going to think about it. Because I deserve to be happy. And ignorance is bliss. And the form of ignorance I'm choosing is by simply forgetting that people are in, are in relationships. Okay, I'm at that place where like everybody's getting married and or everybody is married and I'm kind of just looking around like who's getting divorced? We need a wave of divorcees to hit the floor. Thank you. Because right now it's giving there's no first timers in the building, you know? And listen, I'm not going to lie to you. The minute that I started, I stopped dating and I kept focusing like on me. Like the minute I took, I, I, I was not an active participant on my dating life when I just put that shit to the side. That's really when like my shit started popping off. Like I invested so much more time in myself. I was so less like upset sad like I have said this a million times and I will continue to say it I am so happy I don't have a crush I'm so happy I don't have a man that I'm thinking about no I'm so happy that when I close my eyes at night I don't have that sinking feeling in my chest thinking about what they're doing I'm not waiting for no text back. I'm not constantly debating in my head how how this was interpreted, what this means, what are they saying? How do they feel about me? I'm not asking myself these questions. And like, those are questions that I don't even want to be asking in the first place. If you like me, I want to know. 
If you, if I want to feel comfortable, I want to feel ease. I don't want to feel butterflies. I am past butterflies. Every time I've had butterflies, you know what that's been? A motherfucking mistake, bitch. Okay? Those butterflies are fucking warnings, bitch. It's a fucking siren. Okay? Like, I don't want to feel that. Like, I'm getting older. I don't want to be stressed. I want to be at ease. I want to feel calm. If I'm talking to somebody, I want to feel, I want to feel confident in our friendship and our relationship and whatever it is. I don't want to think to myself, I hope I'm not bothering them. I don't want to have any of these like wishy-washy back and forth feelings of confusion. I don't want that. I am over that. I am grown. I want to feel supported. I don't want to question. I don't want to have to ask. I don't want to feel like I'm being lied to or, or taken for granted. I don't want to feel any of that shit. And I'm happy that I don't feel any of that shit. And the only times in my life I have not felt any of that fear, any of that confusion, any of that insecurity, any of that like uneasiness. The only time I haven't felt that is when I've been single and focusing on me. That's it. It's when I've decided that, you know what? It's those moments where like, I don't know what's going on in this friendship right now, but I'm going to have to put this on the back burner because you're acting funky. Okay. And I'm going to revisit this in about a week and I'm going to ask you, are you okay? What was going on? And what I found is that in the friendships that, you know, we're trying, we're really trying to be there for each other, that honesty returns, that honesty comes back. That's when they open up to me. That's what they tell me what's been going on in the friendships that, you know, haven't really worked out. I have found in those moments when I know something's wrong, bitch, I'm a highly intuitive girl. You cannot sit there and tell me. You cannot sit there and lie to me and tell me that you're fine. I feel it in my bones that you are not fine. That we are not fine. And it's in those moments that I find that, you know, people can either just be truthful or they can gaslight you because they're not ready to talk about whatever. And the gaslighting I don't really stand for. So at the end of the day, it's like you have to focus on yourself. And I know, I know, girl, I know, I know, I know. I too am tired of focusing on myself. I am over focusing on myself. I would like somebody else to focus on me for once and for a long time and in depth. But until that happens, until there is somebody that I want to focus on as much as they want to focus on me, I'm going to focus solely on myself because people are really flattered when they see that you are willing to go out of their way, your way to do things for them and to provide yourself for them. And they're like, wow, you are so nice. Thanks. And then you never get anything in return. And you really can't get mad at them for that because that's you making an offering. You're offering yourself. So then you have to be like, okay, I'm putting in so much work into this friendship. I'm going to have to communicate with this person like, hey, I'm really doing a lot of work here. Um, Are you going to reciprocate anytime soon? And, And if they say yes, whatever, and then, you know, time goes on and there is no reciprocation. Um, that's when, you know, you kind of have to put a stop to that. You cannot constantly be more available to people than they are to you. And honestly, like, I have moments where, like, not moments, I go days, weeks, months without talking to my friends because I'm like, I'm not going to constantly wanting to talk to you and then you do not have the urge to call me. We're on pause and this will reconvene 
when you hit me up. And I know that's not, you know, my therapist tells me against this, but I don't be listening to that lady all the time because I am a triple Scorpio. Do you really think it's in my cards to listen to my therapist every fucking time? No. She is probably the only reason why I like do not, I have not burned the world down. But I'm constantly fighting the urge to, okay? And you know what's worse? I ended up on Arab dating TikTok yesterday. And if you've never been on Arab dating TikTok, what you will quickly learn is that you have been settling for the bare minimum for the greater part of your life. Mind you, like years ago, I was like, oh, I'm settling for the bare minimum. I got to stop. And now that I have raised my standards, the men have run away like cockroaches when you turn on the lights. That's what is happening. Needless to say, I foresee the loneliness and me being my priority lasting a lot longer. You know, maybe we might not be anybody's Valentine for a long time, but at least we will be happy and we'll be treated with respect and we will be cared for because we are not putting up with somebody who cannot provide us the basic things that we're asking for in a relationship. Because one thing about me, I refuse to fucking settle. The last thing I want to share with you guys is this tweet that, you know, I posted it and I think a lot of the girls thought I was in my feelings. I wasn't in my feelings. I posted it because I thought it was a good tweet and some a good thing to remember. So Bianca Vivone, period, um, Bianca Vivone on Twitter said, my saddest Valentine's days were never when I was single because I was deeply romantic towards my own life always. Instead, they were the ones I spent clinging to something that was fading, hoping for one more gesture, one more sign, one more reason to stay. My anxiety has never been as bad as when I got a man I'm dealing with and I'm wondering if that last text I sent will be the reason why he ghosted me. And I am just opting out of receiving these emails. That's it. Like that's where we're at. So anyways, I hope you had a lovely day. I hope you're having a good week. Um, I'm having a good week. I'm having a great fucking week. I'm feeling blessed. I'm feeling thankful. I'm feeling appreciated. I'm feeling loved. Um, I really am. And even in the midst of that, I'm still feeling lonely. And that is the duality of a woman. So that is okay. So that was um, this week's episode of POV and My Therapist. Um, I love you so much. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at VinePhilo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O. Um, that's also my Twitter name and my TikTok name. Um, I announced the winner on Monday. And finally, Ms. Vivian, yeah, you, she tweeted me last night. It is Thursday, you guys. She tweeted me last night and she was like, oh my God, I won. I was like, girl, Valentine's Day was yesterday. Like, miss ma'am. Uh, actually, I announced that shit on Sunday, girl. Anyways, so I'm going to send out her package uh, tomorrow because I couldn't do it today. I was working. But, um, but yeah, so I'm going to send out your her package tomorrow. Happy late Valentine's Day. Um, I hope you guys felt loved, whether that was love from yourself or whether that was love from a family member or a friend or your dog, wherever you get love from, take it, take it and enjoy it and give it back. Um, that's really all there is to it. I am so grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for your friendship. I'm grateful for for your love. I feel thankful every time I get a message from any of you, anytime. Like I just, I read a review. I read a comment every time because I just know that at least like there's somebody out there who gets me and who listens to me and who pays attention and who is existing and in, in this moment with me and like genuinely in this moment they're not just like brushing through this moment like you're here with me 
And I really appreciate that. I think we've built something amazing together and I cannot wait for us to keep building. Um, I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Bye. Period.